finish him. Kill the guy now. Run the gun. Kill him. Kill him too. What? What is this? Good day, sir. You are watching Jackie Pan in my house. Who is King Kong, sir? Eh? King Kong. You, you've never heard of ACTV before in your life. ACTV is very educative, informative, and there is football sport there. There is entertainment. There are a lot of things you can You can even attend lectures here. All you know is watch all those nonsense artists and do, do nonsense or uh, you watch nonsense on TV. Eh? Last night you almost came in bed with your fist. It's not me, sir. Eh? You, and you wake up every morning, the bed will be so rough like you've been fighting for your dream. Eh? That's really why you have F's in your courses like but I have, for you. I have you last semester. E, we eat by pounds on you. Very stupid. Oh, you are changing that section to ACTV right now. And oh, but the baby wants to have the first eh? Stupid boy. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, you are welcome to this first series in the lectures for MTH 305, Victoria Mechanics. And in this first lecture, uh, we will be looking at the Dell operator, the operator Dell. We'll be looking at the operator Dell height functions, height being computed with other um, as it acts on vectors and scalars as well. And we'll try to see how this can be interpreted physically. Now, uh, firstly, we need to look at the Dell operator. In the sense of it, uh, the Dell operator is uh, written as an upside down triangle as its symbol. And the implication is that there is a partial derivative in the component i. There is a partial derivative with respect to y in the component j, and there's a partial derivative in the component k with respect to z. So if we look at it, what this actually meant is that if you have, um, you have a Cartesian coordinate x, y, and z. It means that each of these, as this is i, j, k, it means that uh, others, for the first case here, we consider the component as changing in this side. For y, we consider it this way. And for z, we consider it this way. Now, what this operator does is, in its sense, on its own, it's just a normal derivative without meaning. It's, it's, it, it has no meaning like that on its own. But the moment it acts on something, then it gives meaning and understanding to whatsoever it's acting upon. So firstly, we need to know uh, what a scalar field is. Now, when we have a scalar function phi in terms of x and y, z, we refer to such uh, a scalar function as a uh, scalar field, and we also have um, the vector field, which is actually uh, a vector uh, component, a vector function, which are expressed in x, y, z. You know, we identify vectors with respect to their position. We identify it in terms of x. X uh, is actually a variable. Y is a variable. Z is a variable. Now, once we allow del to act on a scalar field, it behaves or it is written symbolically as del of phi. We have del of phi. Now, you will notice here that there is no dot or no cross. It's just written together. Now, what this does is each of the components, the derivative component wisely, we differentiate partially the scalar field. It will differentiate the scalar functions in the direction. So you differentiate respect to x in i direction, j direction with respect to y, k direction with respect to z. Now, one thing we need to note about um, the Dell operator is this. Once the Dell operator works on a scalar field, it produces for us a vector function. It produces for us a vector the outcome of that operation would always be a vector. Now, when we come to, and this is called um, the grad, the gradient of uh, phi. Grad means the gradient. Now, we talk about um, the del operator working on a vector. 
once it works on a vector. And in this operation, you will observe that we have del dot A, the vector A. Now, this vector here, this vector, as it dots it, we refer to it as the divergence. We call div. Div here implies divergence. This is called divergence. Now, once you have a del operator working on a vector and there is a dot in between, it is called divergence. And what we do is we write out the um, del operator and the vector A. If in component wise, let's assume that vector A is written in component wise as A1i plus A2j plus A3k. Now, if we would have that, then it means that we would multiply A in component wise with the del operator. Now, don't forget that the, the unit vectors i that we'll be having, the component i is here. Once they dot themselves, they will give us one. But once you have them dotting uh, their perpendicular uh, directions, j dotting i will give us zero, j dotting k will give us zero, but i will dot i to give us one. And that is why you will observe that by the time we were writing it out, we did not include the directions i, j, k. So it means that once a uh, grad, for grad, it produces uh, a vector for us. But once we are dealing with a divergence, it produces back for us a scalar uh, function. So we would have a scalar function for this. So it means that a div of a vector produces a scalar function, while a grad of a file function, which is a scalar function, produces for us uh, a vector. Now, another way with which the del operator also works is what we call the call. The call. The call of A. And in the call of A here, we would observe that the call of A means that the grad is going to cross, is going to multiply the vector A. The grad will multiply the vector A. And this is how the computation for the call is done. Unlike the div. The div is just a direct multiplication but in the case of the call, we are going to use the concept of determinant. We would find the call, which is a cross product. Don't forget that we've talked about a dot product and, and cross product. So in this case, we'll be looking at the cross product. So this is actually the call is the pro cross product of the del operator and the vector, while the divergence is a dot product. So we deal with the dot product and we deal with the cross product. Now, um, if we give a little ex um, physical interpretation to what this does. Now, we would notice this, that this is a partial uh, derivative, partial derivative, partial derivative, which means it's actually uh, a slope. It's a slope. We are looking at a slope. So, for us to give a physical interpretation for the div, we look at it as if we are picking a flow in fluid flow. As if a flow, a, 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 a kind of fluid is flowing through a pipe. If fluids are flowing through pipe, so we draw, uh, we draw a little box like this. We draw a little box, and we have fluid flow this way. The fluids are flowing through. 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 Now, we would observe something here, that here, the, the magnitude of the arrows is increasing and is increasing alongside both case, both, both sides. As it's incre is increasing, is increasing, it's increasing. Now, we we'll look at whatsoever thing goes in here, comes out the other side. Whatsoever thing goes in here, comes out the other side. It means that the direction is kept and the magnitude that is coming in is also going out. So for the div, it's showing us that in this direction that the flow, the flow is moving, it's actually having the same magnitude and the changes are just the same. So we talk about the change. But when it comes to the, um, when it comes to the case of the call, we will talk about uh, the motion of the vector as if uh, it is defined as the measure of how a particular moves in a circular motion about a given point. So we can draw that as having, say, uh, we have 
x and y axis, x, y axis. And we have the motion uh, like this. Now, we would note something that as we are moving away from the origin, we will discover that the magnitude of the arrows are increasing. Now, this is what happens, this is what happens when we deal with uh, divergence, and this is what happens when we deal with uh, call A. This is what happens when we deal with the divergence, and this is what happens when we deal with call A. There is a circular motion as, as the as if the vector is moving around, is moving, but the magnitude begins to increase as it moves away from the point. But in this case, it's just a flow. That is flowing, is flowing, is flowing in the direction. And the magnitudes are... of the vector will be equals to zero. So what we're saying here is, if we have the divergence like this, showing us for a portion whereby what is going in is equivalent to what is coming out, our divergence equals zero. And if what is going in is less than what is actually coming out, we would have uh, our divergence to be greater than zero. And if what is coming in is greater than what is going out, we would have our divergence to be uh, less than zero. Okay. So we can see the concept here as it is uh, depicted for us in the diagram. The concept is depicted for us in the diagram. So we also have for this the a representation for the cross, which is the call A, the cross product of the del operator and the vector. Now, we would observe that this shows us the measure of how the vector circulates about a given point. This is just a dramatic expression. And for the div, this is the way it, it, it depicts for us. So from here, we can define the behavior of our divergence and our call. So for us, once the divergence of a vector is equal to zero, we refer to such a vector as a solenoidal uh, vector. It is called a solenoidal vector. And once the call of this vector is equal to zero, we call it a conservative field. And this vector field is called a solenoidal uh, field. It's called a solenoidal field. And so, Uh, so we have a solenoidal uh, field if the div of A is equal to zero and we have a conservative field if our call of A is equal to zero. Now, you would wonder, what this is actually telling us is that what goes in is what comes out. So it is actually preserved. The amount of water that flows in is what goes out. Except there is either a build inside or something is added extra, extra to it from outside. Now, we'll try to look at how to compute. We'll give some examples and look at how to compute um, 
our grad, our div, and our call. We'll give some examples and we'll try to compute them. Okay, so the example here that given phi be equals to x y squared z cube, now we have to determine the gradient, the gradient of phi. We have to determine the gradient of phi. Now, from our definition, we know that the gradient of phi, the gradient of phi is So we have now this would actually give us the partial derivative of phi phi which in the x direction in with respect to the x direction partial derivative y k derivative with respect what x y raised to power 2 and z raised to power 3. We can differentiate this with respect to x. We will now keep the y and the z constant and we'll differentiate with respect to x. So differentiating this with respect to x will give us y raised to power 2, z raised to power 3 plus j. Then in this case, we would keep the uh, x constant, z constant, we would treat y as the variable. So this would give us 2xy. We will remove 1 from the power here. Then we have z raised to power 3 plus k. We keep x and y constant. And we differentiate related to z. So we would have 3xy. This gives us um, our grad our is y raised to power 2 z raised to power 3 i plus 2 x y z raised to power 3 j plus 3 x y squared z squared k uh, we could have cases whereby we could be told to find uh, the instantaneous grad that means we will be given a particular point at which point we could determine the grad at a particular point for example Given that determine the uh, grad the gradient of phi at point one minus one zero one comma minus one zero. Now what we do is we assume here that this is our x. We take one as our x. This is our y and z. And after the computation, we just slot in those values. And from this here that our y is minus 1. So we have minus 1 squared. Uh, z is 0. We have 0 raised to power 3 i plus 2. Our, our x is 1. Uh, y is minus 1. Z is 0 plus j plus 3 1 Minus 1 squared, 0 squared. From this, we would have from this, we would have uh, we would observe that we would have 0i plus 0j plus 0k. Now, this is our vector. So, it means our grad, the gradient of uh, our phi is actually zero. The gradient of phi is actually zero. So we've computed uh, for the for the particular point gradient. So if we're told to calculate uh, to determine the gradient at a particular point, that is what the gradient looks like for us. And this is we had zero here, but it is also possible that uh, 
that might not give us zero. If we have another um, scalar uh, function given to us, so if we have to us, it might not actually be zero if it's, it's not in this uh, form. Now, we look at the divergence of a vector. We look at the divergence of a vector. Now, uh, the example here says, given x raised to power 3 y i plus y raised to power 3 z j plus z raised to power x k. We have to find the divergence of A at point 1,2. We have to determine the divergence at point 1,2,1. Now, second example. So, our solution, as we solve this, we come back to the concept of divergence, and again says that the div of A is, is written as this. And so that gives us, uh, is written as div for A component X, the second component, uh, the third component. Now we can split this component wise. Comparing it, if we have our A to be A1i plus A2j plus A3k. So if we compare this, it means that our A1 is given as x raised to power 3y. Our A2 is given as y raised to power 3z. And our A3 is given as z raised to power 3x. So we can substitute each of these components in what we have. So our div now will be given as the derivative x raised to power 3y plus derivative, partial derivative with respect to y, y raised to power 3z plus z raised to power 3x. So if we do this, we we'll differentiate, keeping uh, y constant, we we'll differentiate. This will give us 3x squared y plus 3y squared z plus 3z squared x. This gives us our div of a. This is our div of a. But the divergence is not just at all points. It's at a particular point, and the point is given. 1 comma 2 comma 1 and if we equate this we would have this to be x comma y comma z so we would substitute we would substitute the value substituting the values would produce for us um, 3 our x is 1, so we have 1 squared. y is 2, we have 2, plus our 3, uh, y is 2, so we have 2 squared. z is 1, 1, we have 3, um, 1 squared, and we have 1. So this would actually give us uh, 6 plus 12 plus 3, and this will give us 21. Now, we would observe that this actually gives us a scalar quantity. Why? Because it is actually the divergence of a vector. We can see, like what we said the other time, once you do the divergence of a vector, it produces for you a scalar quantity. Now, we would look at um, the call of a vector. We look at the call of a vector. Now, in this example, Uh, in this example, we will use the same, uh, I think we should use the same vector. We would use the same vector as in the div. So let's use the same vector. We will determine, uh, we have to determine 
the call of A. So we determine the call of A. And for us to determine the call of A, we note that we note that um, A is uh, given as x raised to power 3 y i plus y raised to power 3 z j plus z raised to power 3 x k. And that the call of A is A cross del cross A. And this would give us i j k. So component wise, this is the first component, this is the second component, the third component. So we have uh, X, Y, and Z. So here we would have the first component, X raised to power 3 Y, Y raised to power 3 Z, and we would have Z raised to power 3 X. Now, we would apply the concept of determinant. We'll be finding the determinant, the concept of determinant. That's what we would use in solving, in resolving determinants of so for us to do that uh, do that what we'll do is for us to consider the first one you know we would cross this and cross this then we cross multiply this with this subtract it from the product of this and this now the same thing we do we block this side and block this for the j we multiply, we multiply this, then we multiply this and subtract. We cross the last uh, column and the first row to have for the values for k. So we are left with this. So we multiply this and subtract from this. So for us to do that, we would have to be i. So if we have i, just to block this, we have this multiplied by this. So we have uh, d, the y, z raised to power 3 x minus d z would have y raised to power 3 z now note that the concept still holds or minus plus minus so we keep this constant so we have minus we have j we would have d x z raised to power 3 x minus d z x raised to power 3 y plus k would have d x y raised to power 3 z minus d the y x raised to power 3 y so we can easily resolve Resolving this now will give us i. If we differentiate this now, because there is no y here, this goes to zero. So we have zero minus. Now there is a z here. This gives us y3 minus j. Now there is x here. This gives us z raised to power 3. There is no z here. This goes to zero. Plus we have k. This here has no x. So this goes to zero because it's a constant. Zero minus. Now, there is y, this gives us x raised to power 3. So, this would now give us minus y raised to power 3i minus z raised to power 3j uh, minus x raised to power 3k. And we can rewrite this as minus in bracket y raised to power 3i plus z raised to power 3j plus x raised to power 3k. And this is the vector it produces for us. Now, as we try to um, evaluate this at the point, uh, at the point 1, 2, or even let's say 1, 2, like we did for the div, we would observe that we just uh, this would give us minus our y is 2. So this would be 2 raised to 3 i. Our z is 1 j. And our x is 1 as well, k. Actually give us minus, um, this is 8i plus, this is 1. So we have k plus, this is also 1, we have k. 
So the new vector we'll be having would be minus. Now, uh, there is something I need to I need to explain concerning the call. Uh, in case of the call, we would observe that the call is a function in circular form. Let's assume we have a circular form, a circular motion. It moves. We have the vector A moving in this direction. Now, the call of this vector is going to be a perpendicular vector. The call of A is going to be a perpendicular vector. It's going to be a perpendicular vector to the, pos to the plane of vector A. It's going to be perpendicular from the center. It's going to be perpendicular to it. So if we want to do it, is assume the vector is moving this way. So if you do your thumbs up, this is the direction. Now, if this vector moves in the clockwise direction, if it moves backward, then have it moving this way, then it will produce a downward a perpendicular vector. So what it means is that you change the direction of A as it's going from the right to the left, to from the left to the right. It will produce a downward vector for you. It will produce a downward vector for you, which is called A. But the difference is that this will be it will be a negative vector. You see that this is actually minus. So this is that um, vector is actually going in the opposite direction. From this, we've seen how um, Dell and our call works as they are being used depending. And to this, we'll be drawing the cutting. Other examples as you can do. Thank you very much. Finishing. the guy now. Round the corner. What? What is this? Good sir. You are watching Jackie Pan in my house. Who is King Kong, sir? Eh? King Kong. You, you've never heard of ACTV before in your life. ACTV is very educative, informative, and there are football sports there. There is entertainment. There are a lot of things you can do. You can even attend lectures here. All you know is watch all those nonsense artists and do, do nonsense or you watch nonsense on TV. Eh? Last night you almost came in bed with your fist. It's not me, sir. Eh? You, and you wake up every morning, the bed will be so rough, like you'll be fighting off your dream. Eh? That's the reason why you have F's in your course, like but I have, made for you. I have it last semester. E, we eat by pounds on you. Very stupid. Oh, yeah, change that section to ACTV, right? Now and oh god, the baby was too happy because boy. Stupid boy.